Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You may be seated. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night, when He instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it's proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves as St. Paul urges us to do. The Holy Sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, He became man so that He might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon Himself our sin and the punishment we deserve so that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat. This is My body which is given for you. It is as if He said, I became man and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you My body to eat. In the same way also He took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in My blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if He said, I have had mercy on you by taking into Myself all your iniquities. I give Myself into death, shedding My blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in Him and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of Him, showing His death, that He was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving Him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow Him, According to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. As our Lord on this night exemplified this love by washing his disciples' feet, so we by our words and actions serve one another in love. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes and one bread made from the countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of Him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. 
May the Almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by His Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. So having heard the Word of God, let us confess our sins, imploring God our Father for the sake of His Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. I invite you now to come forward to receive absolution individually.
Now may the God of peace Himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you've left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Tonight's Old Testament reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 24. In these verses, uh, we have uh, Moses coming to the people. This is after he's received the Ten Commandments and a a little bit more of the law on Mount Sinai. And what we'll hear tonight is really the sealing of that covenant. Uh, So I'll encourage you as you're hearing these words tonight, picture in your mind the events that take place here. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the just decrees. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrifices, uh, sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Hebrews chapter 9. These verses are going to be a commentary on our gospel reading and tying it back to our Old Testament reading. It's all tied together, one, uh, an old covenant, one anew, both made with blood. When Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, how much more will he purify our conscience from dead works, to serve the living God. Therefore, he's the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where there is a will involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will takes effect only at death, since it's not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. And in the same way, he sprinkled with blood both the tent and with all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ entered once for all into the holy places by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. 
Therefore, he's the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. stand for our gospel reading. In tonight's gospel, we'll hear Jesus celebrating the Passover with his disciples, but more than a normal Passover, Jesus actually changes this meal, thus instituting what we now know as the Lord's Supper. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat this Passover? He said, Go into the city and a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. They were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after the other, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it's written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You've said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, 
And after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. He took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As I had you picture in your mind our first reading for tonight, you may have noticed all the blood. Blood is everywhere. Actually, in all three of our readings for tonight, it actually looks more like a crime scene than it does a church service. In that Old Testament reading, there's, there's blood drained, there's blood spattered, there's blood poured. In our Gospel reading, we heard blood that is drunk. There is blood of bulls, blood of goats, blood of humans, blood even of God Himself. And with all this blood everywhere, it can make us a little squeamish. It's actually a little upsetting to think about that much blood. But if we're willing to, to sit and reflect on that for a moment and, and work our way past that initial uh, squeamishness, we'll see that in our Old and New Testament readings, in, in Exodus and then especially in our Gospel reading, blood case plays a key role, and yet, yet blood is used a little bit differently in each case. In the book of Exodus, it was the blood of the covenant, at least blood of the Old Covenant. Now, in order to get this blood, they literally had to kill lots of animals to get it. This was sacrifices that went on for all of God's people there gathered at Mount Sinai. Hundreds, if not thousands of animals needing to be sacrificed at this point. As they are going through their sacrifices, going through this ritual to confirm the covenant, God and man are in separate places. 
God is there on the altar. That's why blood is splashed on the altar. And the people there are in their own separate category. The blood is meant to unite them. But the people are distinct. They are separate from each other. And those people, when it comes time for their half of the covenant, they get the blood just spattered out on all of them. It says the blood is thrown on the people. It covers them. Or at least it sprinkles them, however that worked. Very much this blood would have been on their bodies. It would have been an external sign. Maybe even stained their clothes as a constant reminder of the covenant that they were in with God. Come around to our gospel reading. It's the blood of a covenant. But this time it's the new covenant, not the old With the old covenant, you needed sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice to keep this covenant fresh, to continue to work that relationship with God and man. But here in the new covenant, one sacrifice. One sacrifice that was the end of the sacrificial system. The blood of Christ alone on the cross is the blood that that unites us with God. And God and man are united by the blood of Jesus, but even here in tonight's meal, as Matthew records it, God and man are not separate. They're there sitting around the table together, drinking from one cup. I know many of us are a little uncomfortable with the, the common cup. We prefer the individuals. It's meant to be the same symbol, though. It's wine from the same source. There together we drink the blood of Christ, drink the same cup, being united not only with each other, but with God Himself. And as those disciples drink this wine that is the blood of the covenant that Jesus says, it's a little different than the blood that was poured out on the people, thrown on the people in the Old Testament. That was an external covering, dealing with their outward bodies. But here in this meal that Jesus institutes, the blood is for our interior. It's more about our hearts than it is our actions. Our actions should flow from the heart, but it's very much a matter of your internal state, not your external state. It is both our Old and New Testament readings uh, deal with blood, in, in some way similar, some way different. They both have one truth underlying that the author of Hebrews pulls out. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Now, we could have another conversation about why that is the case. Why is it that there's uh, blood being tied in with forgiveness? That's another conversation for another day. But the way it worked in the Old Testament was you had priests and Levites and those working in the temple. They would go to the tabernacle. They would sacrifice. And there were all sorts of parts and pieces that had to work together in order to have the blood of the covenant to forgive sins. The new covenant comes around and all those rules, all those parts and pieces are taken up in one person. The author of Hebrews tonight spells out that Jesus is the high priest. Jesus is the tent not made with human hands. Jesus is even the sacrifice itself. In that old covenant, things could go wrong in any step along the way, but with Christ fulfilling all of these roles, He does it perfectly and finally. It's why the author of Hebrews says that that Jesus is greater than this whole sacrificial system in the Old Testament. It's worth reading these verses again, starting at verse 13. If the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without blemish to God, how much more will that blood of Christ Purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Old covenant was good. It did what it needed to do. But how much better is Christ? He is the mediator of a new covenant 
so that those who are called, that's you and me, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. What was in the old was good. It was right. It was necessary. But it was temporary. Christ is eternal. His blood continues to cover you and me. We can see this in how both of these systems played out in their immediate context. As the people of Israel had the blood thrown on them, Moses, Aaron, and three others, uh, along with 70 of the people of Israel, the, the elders of the tribe, they go up Mount Sinai and they have a meal with God Himself. They see the God of Israel and He doesn't kill them. It sounds like a strange detail to add, but... That's the way it works. You see God, you die. Unless you are part of this covenant. Yet that was only one meal. Jesus, as He institutes His meal, again with blood that is the blood of the covenant, He invites us to this meal again and again and again. As often as you do this, in remembrance of me. He means us to do this again and again, to take part in this feast, this feast that Jesus has given to us, this feast that pulls us into that covenant, that holds us in this relationship that God has made with us. Here at the Lord's Supper, we have fellowship, not just with one another, but with God Himself, being united with Him. That's that's why we call it communion. We commune with God. Here at the Lord's Supper, we receive the forgiveness of sins because of what Christ has done on the cross because of that blood that is now the blood of the covenant which we drink ourselves. We receive that forgiveness. Here at the Lord's Supper, we receive salvation itself. Salvation obviously tied with that forgiveness of sins, but being saved from all evil, from everything that afflicts us. Here at the Lord's Supper, we receive life itself. If Jesus is present here as we say He is, and Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, we come to this table and we get life and life eternal. That's why many early theologians in the church describe the Lord's Supper as the medicine of immortality. You take this medicine and you live forever. This cup is the New Testament in Christ's blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue by standing and confessing our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Savior, 
at your gracious invitation, we come to your table to eat and drink your holy body and blood. Let us find favor in your eyes to receive this holy sacrament in faith for the salvation of our souls and the glory of your holy name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble and hearty thanks for all the goodness and loving kindness that you bestow on us. We praise you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, we bless you for your boundless love in the redemption of the world by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We ask you to give us a right understanding of all your mercies, that our hearts may be ever deeply thankful, that we may show forth your praise with both our lips and our lives. Direct our lives in ways of holiness and righteousness all our days, that we may enjoy the testimony of a good conscience and the hope of your favor, be sustained and comforted in every time of trouble, and finally be received into your everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue by bringing forward our offering. this point in our service that Jesus comes to be present with us in, with, and under the bread and wine of Holy Communion. Because of the unique nature of what happens here, we ask that if you have not been instructed in what this meal means, if you belong to a church body with a different confession of faith, or if you're unprepared, that is unrepentant uh, for the sacrament tonight, that you would refrain from doing so. You're always welcome to remain in your seat and sing along with the hymns, or come forward for a blessing. If that's what you'd like, just cross your arms in front of your chest to let us know. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to You, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, nevermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created 
And you sent your only begotten Son into the flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of His body and His blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg You, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with Your Word and Spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat His body and drink His blood as He bids us do in His own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and His kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To You alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when He was betrayed, took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is My body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of Me. In the same way also He took the cup after supper. And when He had given thanks, He gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in My blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of Me. So often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us Your body and blood to eat and drink, You lead us to remember and confess Your holy cross and passion, Your blessed death, Your rest in the tomb, Your resurrection from the dead, Your ascension into heaven, and Your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in Your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you've given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.